Welcome to the How to Cheat in Maya 2012 video tutorials. My name is Kenny Roy and I am your host. And this is a video tutorial that's very close to my heart. This is based on the secondary action cheat that is in the fundamentals chapter. So if you are following along, go ahead and open up that Maya file. I'll wait. Okay. So why I love this is because secondary action is so close to my heart. I love I love secondary action. What you need to know about it is that it really is the window, the gateway to getting to the subtext of the scene. Because as humans, and this is a rule from improv, we're always doing something. If we're, you know, let's say we're ironing a shirt. You know, are you going to be talking about ironing the shirt? No, you're not. You're going to be talking to somebody. You're going to be you're having a conversation. But all of that subtext, all of the, all the meaning behind the words can be completely displayed by like how you're ironing that shirt. So if someone tells you something that really excites you, you might pick up the pace a little bit and you know, be doing little details and whatever, right? But if someone tells you really, really bad news, you might come to a, a stop and, and then take it off the, the shirt because you forgot what you were doing. You don't want to burn the shirt. But, oh my God, all that news is, is, is so much weight on my shoulder. You know, it, it, I love how you can just, I call it coloring the secondary action to get all that subtext, to deliver all of that subtext. I love it. So the reason I like the secondary cheat that we wrote for the fundamentals chapter is because one of the best ways to color the action is to stop it. Because what you're doing is you're actually building up this charge. You're, you're actually putting energy into the composition, the screen space. And when you stop it, it's like you cash all that in. It's like you all of a sudden cash in on all of that you know, tension and, and, and action that's happening. So go ahead and open up the secondary scene start. And uh, we watch it right here. And the, so another reason why I really like this cheat is because it takes advantage of Maya's really cool animation layers. Now animation layers are used in production when you want to make non-destructive changes to your animation. So in other words, you want something to make a uh, it, it, it make a change to your animation, but if you have animation underneath that, you want to be always able to go back to it or add something new or whatever. So for instance, if you had a turn and like a head wobble in the turn, well that would change, you know, you'd have to put, put that right into that turn. And that would change all the rotation curves on, on your head. Or you can just key that turn nice and smooth and then add a new animation layer with that head control on it and then just key a wobble right here. And then when you put them on top of each other, there's the turn and then the head wobble put together. Anyway, so for this cheat, it's much more advanced because we actually get a performance out of just a little bit of work, which is nice. Okay, so we're just gonna look right here and see kind of like what's going on with his performance. All right, and so he's basically watching someone walk by and he's tapping his finger. All right, so if we go to the animation layer, you can see if you select finger tap and then the hand control, it will load the animation curves. And let's just jump to the graph editor and, and, and see what we've got going on right here. Okay, so it's basically just an action repeated over and over and over, just lifting and dropping his finger. Okay. Now what I wanted to show you in this video is how you should have a very experimental attitude. How you should be always exploring and trying new things. Because with Maya, it's super easy to fix a mistake or to go back. Or they, There's so many tools that allow you to just be free and wild to try new things. So let's just key the weight of this animation layer like we uh, did in the cheat. Okay, So I'm just going to uh, key it right now by hitting the little K right here and that keyed it at a weight of 1. And then since 
Uh, we want him to be tapping at kind of like full power for a little while. I'm going to key it again. And then let's bring it down, I don't know, let's bring it down to zero right here. Key it one more time and then bring it back up to one over here. Now you notice I'm flying all over the timeline. It's not, the, the frame is really irrelevant. It's all I'm doing is putting the keys in that I know I'm later going to adjust and tweak to make the best performance, the strongest performance. So let's do this. Let's just watch what we have so far. He's tapping, 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 and then it really dies down once he looks, okay? And it comes back up to, to full power. So I'm going to experiment. Let's go into the graph editor, and if you uh, look over here on the left, in the the top of the finger tap controls, the, the second row is actually the weight. I'm going to hit F to frame that. I'm going to flat these tangents as well, just so that we have uh, what resembles copied pairs. Okay. So let's, let's try this. Let's see what the difference in the performance is if it takes him a lot longer to stop tapping his finger. Okay. In fact, let's do this. The last frame of my shot is frame 150. Let's have him just really, really slowly, see this curve, really slowly stop tapping his finger. And let's just see what the resulting performance is. I'm just going to watch this and pretend like I'm viewing this for the first time. Well, I am viewing this for the first time, but I'm going to sit back as an audience member and see what performance I'm getting rather than try to go for something and, and, and get all complicated and get too close to the work. You know, be an audience member every once in a while. So I'm just going to watch this and see what I feel. Okay. To me, that's not very strong. I think it could be improved. The problem with this, the problem that I'm seeing is that the way that it is really, really gradual makes it feel like he's not thinking. It has to really come to almost a stop when, he, when he's looking uh, towards screen left because it's, it's like that movement in his finger almost feels like it's, t it's, it's displaying to us that his mind is wandering. And when you stop it, it's like his mind stops wandering. So let's see what happens if I just uh, bring this back. Let's have it come to a stop. Um, let me see here, right as he, his head comes to a stop. So like right around frame 90. And then instead of coming uh, back up to full, okay, by the end of the shot, I'm going to have it come back up to about halfway. So I'm going to type in the weight of 0.5 right here. Okay, and then let's see. Let's see what kind of performance we, we get from this. Let's just sit back and pretend we're in the audience and, and just feel it out. I like that a lot better. I really like that. So for all intents and purposes, this could be your process when you're making a uh, animation where you're piling on the layers and you're really using uh, a, a layered approach to feel around the performance. I do this all the time and a lot of pros have workflows that allow them to make changes and then kind of just like sit back and, and watch it. And those are the strongest workflows. I guarantee you that if you're in a production and you have a major note that you need to address, if your workflow to begin with incorporates a lot of performance change with very little work, then that major note is not going to ruin your day. Right? Because it's just it's it's what you do every day. You're tweaking this, you're you're changing that, you're watching it, you're seeing how much, you know, okay, well now it doesn't look like he's thinking or whatever. So then when the director comes and says, you know what, I need it to look like this character is really thinking hard and something suddenly comes to mind. If that was the note for this shot, what we would do, it was ju we would just key the weight to come to a really quick stop. Let me just do it really quickly. Okay, 
So now it comes to like a dead halt uh, between frames like 47 or so and like 66. Let's watch it. See that? Because it stopped so quickly, now we have a totally different performance. So make experimentation, make exploration part of your workflow. And I promise what you will find is that when you have performance changes, it is no big deal. And that is the best animator to be, flexible, editable, and having um, basically just an ex exploration in your scenes with performance choices. Okay, I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something new. Again, thank you for, uh, for being here and watching these video tutorials and for buying the book. And we hope um, everyone uh, hopes that you're getting everything uh, you need out of the book and it's really helping your animation. Now, if you'd like to see more tutorials like this, I have a training site at kennyroy.com. And if you enter the promo code as a thank you, I have given uh, 30 days free to all the readers of How to Cheat. Maya 2012 and the promo code is how to cheat 2012 just enter that on the front page of kennyroy.com and you'll get 30 30 days free as a thank you so again thank you and i hope you've learned a lot good luck with your animation and as always rock on